Good morning. Today I will be discussing Barbara Johnson's The Critical Difference, published in 1980. Barbara Johnson's The Critical Difference is perhaps one of her most defining works, one in which she examines the ways in which literature and theory are intertwined in significant ways and presents the importance of critical thinking when examining either. And nowhere does Johnson sum up the ideas she is presenting so succinctly than in the opening remarks section of the book. <laughs> from pages 9 to 11, that's uh, Roman numerals. From here, she sets the stage for the rest of the book, bringing to life the oppositions that are presented within the many essays collected in the following chapters. The main idea of the text is a simple one. The two halves of literature and theory are two sides of the same coin, and the fact that the, as she puts it, differences are not as clear cut as one would like them to be. To quote Johnson, the, essay collected, the essays collected in this volume have as their common focus the problem of this type of difference as its structures and undermines the act of reading. I believe that this quote best outlines the goal of this work. <clears throat> To present <clears throat> essays that challenge the reader and emphasize the importance of a critical thinking. Drawing a strict line between literature and theory will only place unnecessary limitations on the act of reading and will hamper one's ability to engage with a piece of media beyond the surface level. I believe that Barbara Johnson is making this argument for an incredibly novel reason. Put simply, I believe she is attempting to make a case for the importance of literary theory and critical thinking within not only the, acad the academic world, but also within everyday conversation. Johnson's goal with this work is to encourage the idea of looking at written work on a more thoughtful and investigative level, one where literature and theory are more interdependent and our understanding of theory can inform our understanding of the literature itself. <laughs> Johnson's case is best supported by the fact that she lists the essays that she has collected in the later chapters, specifically or the oppositions that each of the essays deal with, from sexuality slash textuality in chapter two, to naive slash ironic and murder slash error in chapter six. Johnson lays out in brief what the essays are saying, showing us that she is indeed attempting to put a much more nuanced way to interpret and engage with written works. She also references and quotes Jacques Derrida's essay, La Difference, where he emphasizes the quote, where he quote, emphasizes the inseparability of the spatial and temporal dynamics of difference, which seems to be a simplified way of saying that Johnson is attempting to get across with this book as a whole. <clears throat> I believe that this work would be incredibly relevant to modern literary thought and contemporary social life as a whole. In a time when we are moving more and more towards simplicity in our written work and media, see, uh, much of the films that movie studios are putting out today, simple stories with simple characters. And much of the audience tend to not be too concerned with looking any deeper into what they are viewing or reading beyond the surface level. <clears throat> Many people consider we are living in a time where, quote, media literacy is dead, as they colorfully claim. As such, I think Barbara Johnson's <clears throat> as such, I think Barbara Johnson's The Critical Difference would be an excellent work to help convince more people to look deeper into the media that they are consuming and encourage a much more critical thinking with said media in general with people. In summary. Barbara Johnson's 1980 work, The Critical Difference, is an extremely well put together book that examines the importance of literature and theory and presents a compelling argument for not separating the two when discussing them. And as it stands, 
I believe it would be an incredibly worthwhile piece of literature in today's modern context, mainly for the fact that it is a champion of critical thinking for any piece of media that one is engaging with. Thank you for your time. My name is Logan Rutledge, and this has been my presentation.